<laughs> My name is Pastor Frank, and I am thrilled to have you here. Welcome to our in-person worship congregation and to all of you online. You know, we are engaged in the season of Lent, Lent which means the lengthening, the lengthening of days. And so we have this season, and we're call, our message series is called inner navigation. How is your inner navigation going as you make it through this unusual season? We'll explore that a little bit this morning, but we're going to start instead of listening to me, we're going to start with our band. Oh 
comes to your side so heaven is real and death is a lie i want to hear voices of angels above singing as one hallelujah holy holy god almighty the great beside thee, God Almighty, the great I am. I want to be near, near to your heart, loving the world and hating the dark. I want to see dry bones living again, singing as one. Hallelujah, holy, holy, God Almighty, the great I am, who is worthy, none beside thee. shake before you the demons run and flee at the mention of your name king of majesty there is no power in hell or any who can stand before the power and the presence of the great i am 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 hallelujah holy holy god almighty the great shake before you the demons run and flee at the mention of your name king of majesty there is no power in hell or
Wow. 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 Thank you. That's Courtney. <laughs> That's Sierra. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you. You give glory to God with your voices. Thank you. Band, you bring glory to God when you pray, when you play, when you pray too. <laughs> I've been getting some questions. I, I, just for your information, Rich Cole is back on the soundboard this morning. You know, our band is pretty good, but it's really the soundboard guys that make all the difference. <laughs> uh, I've been getting some questions. Uh, one of them goes like, uh, where in the world is Jen Klima? I take a little offense to that because I think that people do not want to see my beautiful face. <laughs> Jen got, has a little thing going on with, with not being able to take bright light right now. And it's making project, uh, progress and she's doing well. And so she'll be back just as soon as she can be. And we love you, Jen. And we love you, Klimas. And... Rich Cole is back at the board, and that's kind of a sacrifice because Nicole Cole hasn't been able to be here singing lead for quite some time, and we pray for Nicole, and she's making progress too, and I texted her this week, and she, said, she told me, I had a great day. Sometimes they aren't as great, so when she gets a bunch of great days in a row, we'll see her back, and we, this is a shout out to you, Nicole. We love you. And Rich Cole is back there at the board because Andy Kerr, our normal sound guy, had his hip replaced. Wow. He's getting retooled. He's going to be even more perfect than before. So God bless them. And hello to the Smiths who are new in our midst. They are the ones who came, Brad and Samantha Smith are the ones who came saying, we think we want to be a part of this church. And they visited me with me the Saturday after we closed in March. So when we've been open, they've been here, and now they're part of our streaming team. And they're awesome, aren't they, Marty? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> we are thankful for the Smiths. And if Kat, if Kat is here, on, online. It'd be very early in California. But Kat did so many weeks and months with us in our streaming. We think of Kat Todd, who's studying film in the, on the West Coast. So now, uh, how's your inner navigation going? How's your inner navigation going? You got, I've got this message series, and I've got these symbols, uh, nautical symbols, on the altar. Who truly is the captain of your ship? Who provides the anchor? You know, the anchor is one of the most ancient Christian symbols. Who truly is the anchor to which you tether when the storms blow strong? It's hard to see this symbol, and I'm going to talk about this. I'm going to tell a story that, that relates to this diver, diver's helmet later in our series. This is a, a deep sea salvage diver's helmet. And after I tell you the story that goes with this helmet, you will know why my wife Beth gave this to me about 15 years ago, and I've always had it in my office since then. So, Jesus is the pilot of your ship. Jesus is the anchor of your life. Jesus is the one who will come to you and salvage your being when calamity comes. Just a reminder, how's your inner navigation going? Now, we have some rules here. I want to mention to you, to you just some rules. The, the first rule is, and I, you know, I don't wear a mask, so the first rule is that the people in the front row are allowed to move their chairs back if you're uncomfortable. Uh, 
we, we made a decision months ago that when we were in in-person worship, the pastor that's preaching, the presenter, would not need to wear a mask. So you're allowed to say this and go however you're comfortable. Second thing is, children come first. Children come first. Thank you. Thank you for coming. If somebody gets a little fidgety, a little bit, uh, uh, needs to take a walk, go ahead. We, right now, we, don't, we can't allow the, the typical United, uh, New Albany Methodist practice of kids running in herds inside for obvious reasons. We can't do that. But children come first. Nobody gets put in this, in this place in a straight jacket or Velcroed to their seat. Okay? Children come first. And their parents come second. So, um, and so the, the other kinds of protocols that we do are, are, are going to continue for a while. We really need to see how these variants are going to go, but we're going to strive our hardest to continue to have in-person worship from now on. So thank you. Thank you for taking bringing your heart to Jesus in this place. Will you pray with me? Oh God, we bless all these on our prayer list who have an affliction of one kind or another. We know some families that are grieving. We know folks are recovering from procedures, doing rehab, medical therapy. We pray for doctors and nurses and respiratory therapists. We pray for laboratory professionals. We pray for pharmacists. We pray for a logistics specialist. Lord, help all of those who will make this pandemic a distant memory. And we pray for our church. We pray for the way that we are regathering our strength, that we are bowing humbly before you. And to realize that we've got work to do. And help us to keep an eye out for those who need a little encouragement a little guidance, a little light on their path because you are the light and you have called us to be bearers of the light to our neighbors and to our friends and to be visible light that shines through the entire world. So thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for this season of worship. And we pray in Jesus' name, amen. Whisper of your voice. 
place contain the seas So who am I to try to take the lead Still I run ahead and think I'm strong enough So his, who is the pilot of your ship? Who's your king, the king of your world? It's a worthy question for us all to be asking. And we really have needed to tether to the rock of our salvation, haven't we? How's your inner navigation going? I'll be reading my, our scripture during my message. Will you pray with me? Oh, dear God. You are king of our world. You are the love of our life. You're the rock of all salvation. And Lord, we know, you know, that we so thank you for these gifts that we offer in person, online. Mailing a check, check to the church. Pennies, nickels, dimes stock options with ever whatever capacity we have to give we offer this to you with the generosity of our hearts because you have been so generous to us So take these gifts and multiply them. Use them for the building of the kingdom in this time, in this place, and throughout the world. And then set us to the doing of your will. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Bodhi Brizendine is the 
head of school at the Spencer Girls School in Manhattan. You may have heard of it. She writes a worthy message to us. She says, I host a series of breakfasts for kindergarten parents during the fall of each year. At a recent one, I'd learned a phrase that the kindergarten and first grade teachers use to calibrate emotional response to disappointment. Was a situation, the teachers ask a child, was a situation a glitch or a bummer or a disaster? And what's the difference? One parent told the story of her daughter's first response to a coveted and long-promised lollipop ring that when first opened had a crack in it. It was a disaster. A disaster, she said with a certain operatic, dramatic tone. Making distinctions sometimes is hard work, isn't it? Sometimes we need a framework of thinking. Is this a glitch or a bummer or a disaster? Some things really are disasters. And it's great when we know the difference. I bet you remember big sheets on rooftops painted with whatever paint was at hand, send help as helicopters flew overhead. It was a time of Hurricane Katrina and its aftermath. Some things really are disasters. You may well know that Facebook has come to the rescue. You know, Facebook has the ability to create disaster maps because a lot of people have their location services turned on. And so when the the lines are down or, or flooded with calls, when 911 cannot receive any more uh, pleas for help, Facebook, if you have your location services on, will know where you are and may know how to find you, and they work with Disaster services with a Red Cross, with a National Guard to send help. My guess is this year you have made your own disaster map because you know who in your circle may be vulnerable. Our friends... Dave and Linda Umbright live in Texas, Fredericksburg, Texas, near San Antonio, near Austin. And they have never seen cold weather. They used to, they have actually. David grew up in Wisconsin, and, and he lived here, and they lived here a long time. They were members of this church. But they moved to Texas, and since they've been there, they have never seen cold weather, not like this. And David has been recovering from major surgery about six weeks ago, and there he is in the dark, in the cold, no water, on his little patch of ground outside Fredericksburg, and members of his new church had David and Linda on their disaster map. 
So when it became too dark and too cold and too thirsty, someone came and said, come on, it's time. You're coming with us. Took him into town. Who has been on your disaster map this particular year? It's important to know whether it's a glitch or a bummer or a disaster. And 2020 was a disaster in many ways. Not in every way. And you know it and I know it. There are things we have learned, joys we have shared, growth we have experienced because it was so difficult. Um, Our first pastoral assignment was to three country churches. I've mentioned country churches, the Roundhead Circuit. We served Fletcher Chapel, Roundhead United Methodist, and Mount Zion United Methodist, and Mount Zion was located in outside, on the outskirts of Jumbo, Ohio. Jumbo, Ohio was a place that Charles Kuralt broadcast from one time because he thought it was such a hoot that this crossroads that had uh, an abandoned uh, township trustee building at the crossroads and what used to be the general store. So about half a mile north of Jumbo was Mount Zion, our church, and a family went family by the name of the Bokers attended there. Linda Boker was in a terrible automobile accident years before we came. She, she, it was in the days when they would really, put, really would put you in a body cast. Linda was in that body cat, cast for months and months. You may have known someone who would, has gone through that. And Finally, spring came a little later in the, in the year than this. Spring came. Linda was really itching to get out. She'd been indoors months and months. Have you experienced that lately? <laughs> so some friends came by, and these friends had a station wagon. They loaded Linda up in her body cast in the back of their station wagon. They took her off to Lima to the store just to drive around. It was a little later than this in the year. It was a time of spring storms. And in that flat country, south of Lima, Ohio, a tornado ripped through like it was nobody's business and hit Linda Boker's house. And everybody knew she was stuck in the house in her body cast. Everybody came. They couldn't find Linda. Those friends, neighbors, church members, picking through the rubble, looking for Linda, they couldn't find her. And then the station wagon pulled up, and she saw that her yard, her house was gone, and her yard was filled with all the trucks in the neighborhood because they had come. Because they had come. Because Linda was on their disaster map. Yes, 2020 has been a disaster. We're not in it anymore. But we will remember. Remember those who have been on your disaster map, and we will remember each other. So Jesus was at the beginning of his ministry, and you know it. He, he, he got baptized by John the Baptist, and the skies opened up, and it said, and a dove came down from heaven, and then the word of God, the voice of God, kind of like my voice was at the beginning of this service. This is my beloved son. Listen to him. 
And then Jesus went out into the wilderness for 40 days and experienced the temptation of the devil. And then he came in and he went to his, he, he was uh, meandering around, kind of learning to teach a little bit, learning to be a rabbi, uh, tr trying out his various skills to be a teacher of God. And then he went to his hometown. And he went to the synagogue. And the attendant handed to Jesus the scroll of Isaiah the prophet. And this is what he read. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight to the blind to set the oppressed free, and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And all said good things about him. If only he had stopped there. But he said, today, this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. And people began to ask questions uh, of each other. There was a buzz. Is this not Joseph's son? And Jesus kept talking. And the more he talked, the more displeased his congregation in his home hometown became. He said, surely you will quote, quote to me the proverb, the physician heal yourself and you will tell me do here in your hometown the same kind of healings that you did in Capernaum and Jesus reminded them that of the prophet Elijah that said a prophet cannot be heard in his own country in his own town and they became more and more incensed. And they became so incensed at this hometown prophet who proclaimed that, that the season of God has now come upon them because he's come to preach good news to the poor, recovery of sight to the blind, to proclaim that the prisoners will go free. They took him out and they wanted to throw him off the cliff. His first sermon in his home church was a disaster. It wasn't a blummer. It wasn't a glitch. It was a disaster. You know, I've preached something like that. And imagine it would be like what it would be like if with Beth sitting in the congregation when my sermon is a disaster. Is it a glitch or a bummer or a disaster? We've said 2020 has been a disaster. It surely has been a major disruption, don't you think? Don't you disagree? 2020 has been a major disruption. Do not despair if you are disrupted. Welcome right now. Welcome to the human race. Everyone's disrupted. Everyone's disrupted. Do not despair if you're disrupted as long as you are following Jesus. As long as Jesus is the pilot of your ship. As long as Jesus is the anchor of your life. Do not despair. For... for Time is a remedy. We have seen time is a remedy. Things are getting better. We anticipate things will continue to get better. Maybe one step forward, two steps back sometimes. We anticipate that time, time heals all wounds. And somebody else 
that's, a, that's an old adage, time heals all wounds, but somebody else has added to it wounds. Time heals all wounds, and wounds all heals. H-E-E-L-S. Time reveals persistence will eventually conquer resistance. Time is a remedy, but an even greater remedy is God. The most powerful antidote to feelings of disruption is the deeply inclusive, all-encompassing love of God. So, the anchor is one of our oldest Christian symbols. We anchor, we tether ourselves to Jesus in the storm. Have you always been good about that? Have you always been great about tethering yourself to Jesus in the storm? My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' love and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. On Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. When darkness veils his lovely face, I rest on his unchanging grace. In every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. On Christ the my solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. So how's your anchor? Who's the captain of your ship? How's your inner navigation going in this bummer of a year? You know, in Hebrews we read, Who is your anchor in the storm? We have this hope as an anchor for the soul, firm and secure. There is another symbol of the, of the early church. The symbol of baptism was a shell. That's why we use this shell to hold the baptismal water sometimes. And in the Christian church, there is not, not only the ritual of baptism when we uh, symbolize the bathing of the soul, but there is also the ritual of the, the practice of the renewal of baptism. Because the early Christians known, have known that the church is the place you come to get wet. And so I want you to play a little mind game with me. The ritual of baptism, of renewal of baptism, includes a pastor with a bowl full, of, shell full of water, bowl full of water, walking up, to the, up and down the aisle of the sanctuary say, saying, taking the water and sprinkling everyone. Now I thought you might have A negative reaction to that. <laughs> so I did not feel that I wanted to risk that. I've seen it done, and usually people are so startled that they lose the meaning. So I want you to play a little mind game with me. Remember your baptism and be thankful. Remember your baptism and be thankful. Remember 
your baptism and be thankful. Remember your baptism and be thankful. Because church is the place you come to get wet. And I got to ask you this morning, has Jesus gotten you a little wet lately? Has Jesus, has, have you had some Jesus splashed on you this morning? Because Jesus was handed the scroll And he read from the scroll, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor, has sent me to proclaim freedom to the prisoners, to set the oppressed free, and to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And because you come to the church to get wet with the holy water of baptism, because Jesus sends us, then for others who thirst for the water of life, he sends you to deliver it. How's your inner navigation going? Will you pray with me? Oh, dear God, you send us with the water of life as we leave this place. We send you with water to cleanse a world that needs to be cleansed. You send us with the healing water of love. And you send us to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor, which is truly good news. Amen.
your foe, still your love fought for me. You've been so, so good to me. When I felt no remind us, we haven't done this for a while, Beth is going to begin dismissing us from the back rows and we go out the side door. Try to disperse ourselves until we get outside. In a beautiful sunny day, uh, you will be able to linger and chat with each other. Perhaps today you'll want to go on to your car. It's up to you. So Beth, can you help us? Uh, they aren't, uh, not yet, because they want to hear every last note of this song, because I know that this, this group has, Jesus is their pilot, and beyond that, they don't listen to anybody else. <laughs> and that's a good thing. Listen to Jesus. Offerings are at a basket over by the door. I'm seeing what's going on. So go, friends. Who's on your disaster map? Jesus sends you to find them. Splash a little love into their lives, encouragement as you go, because you go forth in the image of Jesus. Go in peace. Go in love. Amen. There's no shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. No shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, lie you won't tear down, coming after me. No shadow you won't light up, mountain you won't climb up, coming after me. There's no wall Still. 